there anything too hard for the Lord? I don't believe so today. Hallelujah. Feels good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want dead, dry church. I want a church that's on fire. Oh, my. He's going to take care of me. Thank you, Brother Waddy. Amen. Appreciate the man of God. Amen. Today. Praise God. I love that our culture of ministry is one of servitude. We serve one another. Amen. I serve him. He serves me. We serve the other ministers. Amen. We serve the body because this is the kingdom of God. It's not my kingdom. Amen. We are all part of the army of the Lord. I'm going to get into that this morning. Praise God. But I'm thankful today for what the Lord is doing in this house. Amen. He is so good to you and I. We ought to be thankful. If you have breath in your lungs today and you can praise the Lord, you ought to be thankful. Amen. You should be thankful. Amen. If you've got a song, I, I like what that said. If you're afflicted, if you're sick, then you better pray. Some of you need to pray. But if you're married, you need to sing. You need to rejoice. Amen. I, I, I feel like somebody needs to rejoice today. Hallelujah. 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 You ought to rejoice in knowing him today. For the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Well, I hope you believe that today. Praise God. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, the 6th chapter, the 14th verse. Amen. I hope you paid attention to the announcements. Amen. We've got a lot of things coming up. Brother Goodrum's going to be coming down uh, the first week of April. Amen. To, to set the tent up and get things ready, we're going to kick off things the weekend of the 9th. Now, we're going to be doing things different in April. So get ready. Amen. There'll be a team of folks assisting Brother Goodrum. Amen. As he is starting the revival over in Lane City. Now, what we'll do is Sunday mornings, it will be church here, except for those that are a part of the team to be there. Somebody say, praise the, praise the Lord. This is evangelism. So we'll have a team working, reaching over there. Sunday evenings, amen, during the Sunday, uh, April the 9th, and uh, April 16th and uh, the 30th, and those three weeks there, amen, we'll have Sunday night service at the tent. We'll put a sign on the door say, hey, come join us, Lane City, at the Big Ten. And uh, that'll be Sunday, Sunday mornings, amen, it'll be church here during the month of April. Sunday nights, we'll go to the Big Ten. Wednesday nights, we'll have church here, except for the team that is going to be working the revival with Brother Goodrum. And I feel like that's going to be a balanced effort there, amen, and that allows us to continue to meet the needs of our community as we're doing outreach. Outreach is very important. Amen. Amen. Now, I had said that we were possibly going to move the tent and um, over to Maddie Street, but Brother Goodrum and I looked at it. He's going to be here for three weeks. It's going to be starting April 9th and ending uh, April 30th. That's a three-week period. So I said instead of moving the tent, this time we're going to focus on the Lane City Revival. That's what I'm going to call it, the Lane City Revival. That God's going to open doors, God's going to open Bible studies, and I believe from that we're going to have a birthing work, amen, to the Spanish-speaking community. Praise God. I believe it's important that we reach everybody with the gospel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And in the future, we'll come back and we'll put the tent up again and, and uh, we'll work over on the west end of town and, and maybe the next time we'll come and we'll work out towards the bowling area. Who knows? We'll just... It's great to have a tent. We just got to find a place to put it, and we'll just have tent revivals. Amen. I was talking to the city manager this last week, and I wanted to make sure uh, uh, we could get a tent put up here in the city, and, and uh, he was very nice to me, and uh, he said, you know, Pastor, he said, uh, used to, we used to have tent revivals and brush arbors. He said, we've gotten away from that. It'd be nice to get back to that. And I said, well, I just want to make sure I'm lining up with all the city regulations and the noise levels and, you know, I, you know, 
We don't want to offend folks. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It, you can offend folks just as easy as you can win them. He that winneth souls is. Praise God. So we have to be wise about it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to, to that coming up. And uh, tonight, YTO, Brother uh, Craig Long is going to be with us. This is Brother McLean's oldest grandson and uh, uh, a tremendous man of God. He's now assistant pastor at uh, Apostolic Temple. He, uh, many years ago, was studying IT, and man, I heard him praying in the prayer room, and I just felt led to tell him, man, you you got to call a God on your life. God's going to use you. And he's like, well, I don't know about that. I'm studying IT, but... Uh, Finally, he heeded the call, and the Lord is anointing him, and uh, you'll be blessed tonight if you make it back to the house of God. Amen? Amen? But I am excited this morning to preach the Word of God. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This morning I want to preach, ready for the battle. We are ready for the battle. Lord Jesus, I thank you once again for allowing us to come to this place of worship. Thank you, Lord, for settling into the praises of your people. We now know, Lord, that you are here with us. I ask you to anoint these lips of clay. Anoint every ear to hear, Lord. Bring understanding to our mind that we might grow closer to you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. I do want to give a praise report. Amen. I heard back from the insurance company, and I, I felt like uh, that uh, because it was water damage coming through uh, areas where there was uh, openings, they would not cover it, and I was correct. But a miracle took place when we called the insurance company, and they sent out the Surf Pro people. They specialize in drying places out. Amen. If you were here the week after the water came in, you know that uh, there was water in the walls, there was water in the carpets, there was water, amen, that we couldn't see, and we were worried about mildew. They came in and for about a week, amen, put their fans out, put the dehumidifiers in, and they took all the moisture out of our building, and they were the ones that started the cutting on the wall. And now we've just added to it to make sure we put a nice new piece of sheetrock in. But um, the bill came up to $9,959 like $9 and some change. And, you know, the insurance company called me and said, well, we're not going to be able to cover, amen, based off the policy, uh, the, the damage, the water damage. But what we are going to do is we will cover the Serve Pro bill. So I thank God for that. That's $10,000 we didn't have to put out. And I, I thank God for him taking care of that. We'll, we'll get, the, and then the Lord's blessed. Folks have stu stepped up, and, uh, and some have said we'll pay for the sheetrock, and others are coming in and, and putting other things in. And so your giving to the uh, sanctuary remodeling or church remodeling fund is still very important. And believe me, uh, I'm thankful for there's funds there now we're going to use and others are saying pastor we're going to give and and we're going to we'll remodel this sanctuary Amen. praise God and uh, I, I think it's going to be beautiful when it's completed and I believe the house of God should be beautiful amen. amen there's just something about going even into other cathedrals and other places that you can walk in and you can just, they're, they're just wow this is a beautiful place of worship I think the house of worship should just be a place where you can walk in and feel the peace of God and know that the enemy is defeated. Praise God. So that is going to be taking place in the days ahead. I wanted to get that out of the way, so if there's any questions, you can come talk to me. But I want to talk about being ready for the battle. 
We know that we're not in a physical battle today. But we are in spiritual warfare. We know that in these last days, we must not live unwisely. And be rocked or lulled to sleep. Got to be careful about getting comfortable. You see, sometimes life just seems to go by mundanely and we forget that we are in a spiritual battle. The enemy just begins to rock us to sleep. And, you know, it's just like a child. You know, when it's tired, it gets cranky. And when it's tired, amen, it doesn't want to go to sleep. But what it really needs is sleep. And if you get that child comfortable long enough, I get tickled at my two youngest because they'll, when, when it's time to go to sleep or we're traveling down the road and we want them to rest, Jonathan, amen, does everything possible not to go to sleep. He will talk your ear off. He will bring up subjects that you don't even know he has an understanding of at his young age. He wants to talk about dinosaurs. He wants to talk about ninja turtles. He wants to talk about everything. And finally his mother says, Jonathan, just be quiet and settle. It's not two minutes. He's asleep. See, all that time he's been resisting. All that time he's been Fighting it. And, you know, sometimes he gets hyper. And you know he's tired because he's bouncing off the furniture. Now, that never happens in y'all's house, but that happens in our house. Amen. Jordan, she just gets flat cranky. And uh, you don't know anything about little girls getting cranky. I know none of y'all know anything about little girls getting attitudes or getting mean. But she gets mean. I think she gets it from her daddy. But I was fussing with him last night, and and, uh, and I had her brother, and I was tickling him, and, and, and uh, she comes over and puts her hand on her. I don't know where she got this, but she got this, you know. I don't know where she got that. And then she gave me an ear for about messing with her brother, and when I let her brother go, she just went, whop. <laughs> you need to go to bed, girl. But there's something in our nature when we don't want to go to sleep, we fight back. And I say all that and, and give that humorous uh, story to, to let us know that the enemy wants nothing better for you than you to be still. He wants you to be still. He doesn't want you to spiritually fight him. He just wants you to succumb to his will in your life. He wants to inundate you daily. Amen. He wants to over Whelm you. He wants you to be comfortable in your relationship with the Lord. He does not want you to grow. He does not want you to be dedicated. He doesn't want you to pray. He doesn't want you to praise. Because if, if you're not praying, you can say you're a believer, but if you have no power, I have always preached this. Prayer is power. Amen. Prayer is like electricity. You can't see it. You can't see the effects of it until you plug in. Electricity is powerful. Amen. You don't think it's powerful. You just let it get a hold of you. I know firsthand what it's like to take an all metal skill saw and think the cord is not around the board and cut through the board and cut through the through the cord uh, with that all metal skill saw and have 120 volts come coursing through my body. It made me dance a jig like I'd never danced a jig before. I was flopping all over the there was power running all through my body. Unfortunately, my cousin had the good sense to go over and kick the cord off the wall. I guess I owed him one. 
But I'll never forget the draining effect of that electricity that, that poured through my body. And prayer, amen, it plugs in to the power source, which is the Spirit of God. That's why we pray before church. And I tell folks, hey, get your mind on the Lord. Tap into the source of the power. Amen. There's nothing worse than a dead church. But I can tell you the reason a church is dead is that it has not plugged into the source of the power. Someone that hasn't prayed doesn't like to praise God. And let me tell you this, amen, I know the scripture was talking about being afflicted, amen, as far as being sick in your body, but there are some who are spiritually afflicted, amen, they're sick in their spirits because they've let the spirits of the enemy come against them, amen, and neutralize them in the spirit realm. I believe the church, I believe the church is the most powerful entity Amen. In existence today. You know, in 1942, on December 7th, President Roosevelt say a day that would live in infamy. The attack of Pearl Harbor was a devastating blow. But the Americans, it seemed, were living in a safe place. See, as long as life is going good for you, you feel like you're in a safe place. I got a roof over my head. I got a job. You know, life is good. No worries. My kids are doing okay in school. Amen. We get to go, you know, every once in a while we go to the mall or, or we can take them on a fun day and, or we can go fishing or we can go do this or we can do that and everything's comfortable. My life's pretty good. And in the back of our mind, we know the enemy's there. Now, Paul, Paul Gilmore could probably give us some, some truth about this, but back in that time, back in the 40s, hey man, before we had the attack, everybody felt like, well, we're pretty comfortable, we're pretty safe. We know the enemy's there, right? People talked about it, I'm sure. We, they knew the enemy was there. They knew that Hitler was over in Europe. And they knew the Japanese were causing mess in the Pacific, but it wasn't affecting us. And the whole time we're thinking everything's all right. They're planning against us. They're looking for ways to attack us. They're letting their agents spy upon us. And yet it was after that attack. Now, many, amen, have heard the quote, how that Admiral Yamamoto said that he was afraid we've, he's awakened a, a sleeping giant. But yet, there's a better quotation from Admiral Yamamoto to Ogagara Takatora on January 9th, 1942. He said, a military man can scarcely pride himself on having smitten a sleeping enemy. It is more a matter of shame simply for the one smitten. I would rather you made your appraisal after seeing what the enemy does since it is certain that angered and outraged he will soon launch a determined counterattack. The other common quotation attributed to Yamamoto predicting the future outcome of a naval war against the United States is, I can run wild for six months. After that, I have no expectation of success. As it happened, the Battle of Midway the critical naval battle considered to be the turning point of the war in the Pacific did indeed occur six months after Pearl Harbor on June the 7th. That was the turning point for us in the Pacific. And so he saw that there is a sleeping giant that I believe we have awakened. And sure enough, his predictions came to pass. I believe this morning that the church is a sleeping giant that the world and the enemy buffets daily. We're daily attacked by the spirits of the world from the east to the west, from Washington, D.C. to Hollywood on the lifestyles that people are living that are contrary to the word of the Lord. And yet it seems that if we're not 
careful. We will fall into a false sense that everything is okay. And because society's views have changed, shouldn't the church's views change as well? The enemy wants to lull you to sleep. The enemy wants you to think that sin is all right. The enemy wants you to believe that you can live any way you want to and God's going to be acceptable of it. But I got news for you this morning. There's only one way to make it to heaven and that is if you're sold out and dedicated to living for the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe that the church... Amen, has the ability to tear down every stronghold. I believe our church has the ability to rise up and be one of the greatest apostolic churches that is in existence today. I believe Peace Tabernacle has that ability. But if we're ever going to become anything for the Lord, we're going to have to rise up above mediocrity. Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. We're going to have to rise up above mediocrity. We're going to have to get on the same page. We're going to have to be unified. We're going to have to stop, amen, thinking about just what it's in it for me, but think about what God wants us to do. Some of you are going to have to adjust your attitude. Amen, you're going to have to adjust your attitude. Amen. If pastor asks you to do something, don't sit there and question him. Don't sit there and doubt him. Don't sit there and murmur and complain against him. Just say, yes, sir, pastor. If you feel that's what we need to do, let's go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because there's something about a soldier. If he doesn't listen to those that are in command, they understand the big picture. And when they give a command, it's to keep that soldier alive. It's to keep them from getting their head blown off. And if a pastor tells you something, I'm not trying to be in control of your life. I'm just trying to keep you from letting the enemy destroy your soul. Hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. We got to make it to heaven. We are in an army. We're in the Lord's army. This is spiritual warfare. Amen. But God didn't, uh, you know, equip us to fail. He equipped us to succeed. I want some of you to understand that. You weren't made to fail. You were made to succeed. God believes in you. He believes in the power of the Holy Ghost in you. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. In a world full of confusion, the enemy's trying to distract us. You got all kinds of charismatic garbage coming around. Amen. That looks like the world and acts like the world. But I'm going to tell you something. The church has never looked like the world. The church has never acted like the world. And the church will never be in the world. Oh, I'm feeling it now. And if you want to put on a show, go to a church that can put on a performance. But if you want to go to heaven, get your mind made up that I'm going to heaven and I'm not going to allow the enemy to entertain me into hell. Yay! My, 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 my. Praise God, we could let down, we could give up, we could give in and say, let's just have good church, let's just have a good show, and I can put on a show. I put on shows before. I've been on stages and entertained the multitudes. Hey Amen, I know how to get people on their feet and having a good time. When you were in the world, you sure knew how to cut loose. Some of you knew how to get foot loose. Let me get down here, Brother Haggard. At least he'll, he'll be honest. Some of y'all lie to yourselves. Some of y'all may say, oh, no, that wasn't me. Huh? Some of y'all got in the club, the music. Well, oh, we in the club. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all knew what I just did. Y'all pray through over there. Come on now. And you come to the house.
house of the Lord and you're dead as a doornail. And when you was in the world, hey man, you didn't serve the devil like you was dead. Come on, when I was in rebellion, hey man, I, look, I would sneak out of the house and go to a dance. I was putting a lot on the line. So if I was going to go, I was going to have a good time. Now, I know some of y'all didn't know about, you know, know anything about that. But I can't always say I was as good as my wife was. She's always saying I was a compliant child. <laughs> Sometimes she'll look at our kids and she'll say, I don't know why he's behaving that way. I was always a good child. I'm thinking, I ain't saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not going to say a word. Because I can't say I was always compliant. But if I went to a dance, I wasn't going to stand on the wall. Some of you may lie to yourself, but I got news for you. Just as hard as I tried to get out in the world and have a good time, when I made up my mind to serve God, I didn't say I was going to be half in and half out, straddling the fence. I made up my mind I was going to live for God with everything in me. And if I could dance in the world, I could dance in church. Amen. If I could get out there and have a great time in the world, I was going to have a better time in church. Hallelujah. I'll never forget. I was a freshman in Bible college, and we was in church, and we was having a good church service, and, and uh, the Holy Ghost was moving on me. Had to be the Holy Ghost. I can't do it now. But back when I was a teenager, MC Hammer was big. You know, you could do the MC. I can't do it now. I'm too old. Gained too much weight. But I decided, Lord, if I could dance out in the world... And, 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 not be, and not be ashamed. I'm not going to be ashamed in the house of God to dance before you. And I was on a platform, part of a, a ministering group. I just put my instrument down. And I just started doing the, well, my, my poor version of the MC Hammer. Back and forth across that church. And the Holy Ghost moved all over me. Because you can't be ashamed about worshiping the Lord. You can't be ashamed of living for God. Amen. You say, well, I don't know. Well, you mean dance before the Lord. You know, is that, you know, well, whatever your dance is. If all you know how to do is two step, two step for Jesus. Come on now. You say, now, Brother Bumgarner, you're getting out. What I hate is a dead church. Because a dead church says I'm defeated. A people that won't praise God. You say, well, that's in the flesh. Honey, you got to start in the flesh to get in the spirit. Some of you are just so ashamed of your flesh that you refuse to even worship him in your flesh. It doesn't bother me to see people move a little bit. It doesn't bother me to see people sway to the music a little bit. Hey, that's all right. God made you to worship him. David danced before the Lord. In fact, David was so whacked out and crazy for God, he even took all his clothes off. Something I do not suggest. But you got to look a little deeper than that. Because David said, I'm going to dance before the Lord. But I'm not going to dance before him as a king. I'm not going to dance before him. Amen. As someone high and lifted up. I'm going to strip away all of my royalness. I'm going to strip away all the accolades. I'm going to strip down everything. I'm going to show this old country that I'm just a man. Amen. And a man shaping in iniquity that God, amen, has put his anointing on. And you see, when you understand who you are, you'll praise him. When you understand who put the roof over your head, you'll praise him. When you really understand who gave you that automobile to drive, you'll praise him. When you understand who put the clothes on your back and the shoes on your feet, you'll praise him. Praise 
it's the Lord that giveth and it's the Lord that taketh away but blessed be the name of the Lord the very breath of life that you have God gave it to you and you want to waste that breath of life serving the world you ought to make up your mind to live for God hallelujah we are not a weak church we are a victorious church you know how I know we're a victorious church and I'm ready for battle because Jesus told Peter in the book of Matthew the 16th chapter and the 17th verse and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed are thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We are the church that was built upon the rock that Jesus declared. Amen. And we are built on that rock, Christ Jesus. And we know as Isaiah said in Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Woo! My mama, I've read that scripture and read that scripture and read that scripture and quoted that scripture and sang that scripture. Come on, Fred Hammond, a few years ago. No weapon formed against me. Anybody know it? Shall I prosper. It won't work. But you read that scripture a little farther. And what does it say? This is the heritage. Brother, when I saw that last night, ha, I've got a heritage. There's some soldiers that have gone on before me. <laughs> There's some prayer warriors that have walked before me. There's some fighters in the spirit. Hallelujah. I loved it. The brother Enrique and Sister Christine got to go up, meet mom and dad, and spend a few days at their house. Hey Amen. They got to see a little bit of what pasture comes from. I got to watch it now. My mother's been battling cancer for the last 12 years, and she goes through her treatments, and it puts a weight on her, and she has a bad day, and then she recovers, but she's never let it get her down. Hey Amen. She's just going to stand on the Word of God. Hey Amen. She says, I win either way. If I die, I'm going to heaven, because I've already died. But I know, I know that woman, She's and she'll probably watch this and get on to me later, but you know, uh, I watched her. I'm here today because she never quit fighting for me. She kept praying for me. I'd hear her crying in the midnight hour. Amen. And she would preach at me. Amen. She'd, she'd get on me. She'd tell me I need to get it right. In fact, when I took them up there, I told mom, I said, now look, uh, you just got to remember I'm pastor here to these folks and uh, you behave. I'm sure she listened to that. Because if she felt like she needed to give me a word, she'd have gave me a word. But I, I watched her. Amen. It's Wednesday night church service up there. We was having a good time and the Holy Ghost was moving and the Lord hit her. Amen. Sister Christine had nowhere to run. She'd been in some spiritual warfare. Amen. But it's something about an old prayer warrior that's been in some battles. Amen. She's been in some battles the last 12 years. Amen. She's looked at cancer for the last 12 years and said, you ain't going to defeat me and you ain't going to keep me down and you ain't going to hold me back. 
Amen. She's like anybody else. There's Sunday she has to miss because, amen, she just ain't got the strength to go. Amen. She gets online and she'll watch Brother Mooney and others that live stream their services trying to get whatever she can for church. I understand it's a battle sometimes when you're going through it. But she never stopped fighting. And yet through all of the weakness of the flesh, and yet through all the things that she's went through, uh, amen, she's tapped into the spirit. So when she prays for somebody, amen, you can know with a certainty God doesn't give her a word. And when I look at that, and I look at my grandmother, and I look at others, I think of the herod, uh, heritage of prayer warriors. Uh, when I go in my office and I look at the pictures, uh, and I see Brother and Sister Gilstrap, and, and Brother and Sister Huntley, and others, and Brother and Sister McLean that have put themselves in my life, uh, I realize I've got a heritage of warriors that have gone on before. And there are those in this church. Ma, 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 ma. There have been some warriors up in this church. Amen. I've heard story after story. But what kind of women, Brother Waddy, walk up in the middle of a crack house? Huh? What kind of business does two little women, amen, graying in the hair, have walking up in there to tell one man, hey, you need to be in church? I'll tell you what kind. The kind that understand that I am not who I am. You may just see a frail little old lady, but I am an, a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I have the host of heaven on my side. And I can walk in the middle of the devil's den and speak thus saith the Lord, and no harm will become me because I know who's on my side. Some of you need to realize your heritage and understand you have the ability to overcome the enemy in your life. Hallelujah. We got to remember we got a cause today. David said, is there not a cause? Now, I like poetry. I like to read different verses. Anybody ever read Homer? No? The Iliad? I mean, these are great things. He said, Without a sign, his sword the brave man draws, and asks no omen but his country's cause. We have a cause today. We know this world is not our home. You better understand that. From the youngest to the oldest, you're not going to live forever in this earthen body. Now, while you're here, He's given us free will. We can do whatever we please. But we are to be ambassadors of Jesus Christ, who has told us of a heavenly kingdom. That's my cause. What's your cause, Pastor? I'm going to heaven. I'm going to make heaven my home. That's my kingdom. I'm down here to be an ambassador. I'm down here to fight a spiritual battle to make sure that every soul makes it to heaven. We are here to fight the good fight of faith. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If there's something that agitates me and aggravates me, is when we begin to condemn others who have left us. When we begin to judge others who have fallen by the wayside. When we look at others who have made mistakes and instead of trying to help them up and pray for them, we condemn them and we talk about them. Oh. See, God didn't put us here to put people down. He put us here to lift people up. People make decisions. I don't agree with their lifestyles. But my job is not to condemn them. My job is to pray for them. You see a brother or sister struggle and falter. Amen. You know, I, 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 I meet young people or people that were raised in the church just like I was. And I was so close to being out of the church. Come on. The, I, I had a, a pull on me from the world that was strong. I had plans. I thought I needed to be successful. I had a plan to where I was going to college and what I was going to do and where I was going to move. But God's calling became stronger 
than the pull of the world. My heart goes out to those that, amen, have felt the presence of God, have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, and yet somewhere down the line the enemy, amen, caused some type of deception and they've lost their way, amen. And many times they don't feel like they can make it back home. Because they begin to feel like I've done too many bad things and I know God can never forgive me. There is no sin. Say blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Saying that God does not exist. That cannot be forgiven. So it doesn't matter what you've done. You can be the biggest crackhead, drug addict, alcoholic, whoremonger. Hey Amen. You could be in an illicit relationship. It doesn't matter. You could even have been a homosexual, a lesbian, whatever that may be. But hey, God's able to save. He's able to deliver. And I got news for some of you sanctified folks. He's still able to restore those that have gone astray and fallen into sin. And if you've been delivered from that, you ought to praise God. And don't be ashamed of it. Shame the devil and tell the truth. That's yours, but I'm using it. <laughs> there is a saying that it was developed through time. Amen. In the military. It's not a written rule. It's not really to one, any one branch. But it is this. Leave no man behind. It's an ethos among military personnel that I'm not going to leave my buddy on the battlefield if he's wounded. I'm going to try not to leave him on the battlefield if he's dead. There was a concern among soldiers. If I die on the battlefield, don't let me be left for the enemy. Don't let the enemy mutilate my remains. It's from this mindset that has remained through the marching of time that soldiers say, hey, hey, leave no man behind. I'm not going to leave my buddy behind. Amen. He may be wounded. He may even be lifeless. But when I leave this battlefield, he's coming with me. Why did the church got that mentality today? Why do we got the mentality? I'm not leaving my brother behind. I'm not leaving my... Yes, they may be on the battlefield and they may be wounded right now. They may not be in our services. They may not be on the training field. But hey, they're still out there and they're lost and they're wounded. They may even be spiritually dead. But I'm not going to leave them behind. Amen. When I walk off this battlefield, they're gonna, I'm going to have a hold of them. Oh, if the church could just get a burden for restoration. Too many times we give up so easy. Don't give up on them, mama. Don't give up on them, daddy. Don't give up on them. Keep believing. The church, amen, is here today to heal the wounded. Uh, the church is here today to help those that have fallen get back up. Uh, the church is here today to make sure that they know, uh, hey, you can make it. You can make it to heaven. Because if we leave them to the world, the world will mutilate their soul. They'll have no eternal rest. For I promise you to spend eternity with Lucifer. Whew. Well, we got to be ready for the battle. I'm not going to leave my brother behind. Hallelujah. That's why when we go back to our text in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, he says, Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Truth. Jesus told us that truth is the opposite of evil. Good is not the opposite of evil because an evil man can do good. But truth is right whether you believe it or not. Truth stands on its own. And when you are living truth, you know that you are right with God. And this morning, there are some of you here today, you know whether you or not you're doing right by God. You know whether it's your house. Brother Bacchus said it so well. The battle's not in here. The battle's never in boot camp. 
You know, the soldier thinks boot camp's rough. Man, I survived boot camp. But just wait till you face an enemy. Just wait till that explosion's real. Just wait for that those bullets to be live bullets flying over your head and those tracers coming at you out of the dark. And hey, it's a, it's a different story, you know. And hey, it ain't the same. And it's the same in living for God. You think we're victorious because we had a, a good boot camp in church. And that's what church is for us. It's training. It's equipping. It's helping us to live for God outside the church. But the real battle is when you walk out the door. And the enemy's waiting for you. And then he's trying to cause confusion. And he's trying to cause deception. And he's trying to infiltrate your home with sin. That's why i got to have my loins girt about with truth. i got to have my belt on. Got to have it all together. See, that's, that's what your belt does. It keeps it all together. Gird about. Tighten down. I'm not going to let truth get away from me. There are some, hey man, I promise you this, there are those that they may leave the church, they may decide to follow the world, but they never forget truth. I'm not, I'm not trying to embarrass him. He'd tell you himself. Brother Thomas told me he was the best drunk preacher you ever met in your life. He said he'd go out to a bar and they got to talking about God. He wouldn't push it on, but they got to talk. He knew it. See, he knew truth. He may not have been living truth, but he knew truth. And there's something about being raised in the church. You learn truth and you never get away from it. You can try to cover it up. You can try to live it a different way. You can try to mistake it. But you always know truth. Amen. Hallelujah. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. That breastplate. Amen. Like having on a Kevlar vest. It protects your organs. It protects your heart. Rightness. Of the Lord. Being right with the Lord is that breath, breastplate. Amen. It keeps the spiritual man from corruptness. It doesn't allow things to get in your heart. I'm ready for the battle. How you know you're ready? I got my breastplate on. Amen. There's no bitterness. Come on now. There's no resentment. Amen. There's no jealousy. Jesus. That's where it starts. Come on. Somebody says, well, you know, the heart's an organ. It's not real. But you have a spiritual simulation right here. My daddy told me like this. He said, son, when I got convicted... I didn't fill it up in my head. I didn't fill it down in my feet. I felt it right there in my chest. God got a hold of my heart. And it wasn't that blood pumping organ. It was that spiritual God pumping organ that said get right with me. And you see the breastplate of righteousness living right before God. If you're living right before God, resentment won't find you. Bitterness won't find you. Amen. A false spirit won't find you. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I pray that among men they will know that I walk with the footsteps of peace towards them and not war. Despite differences and even the, the sin they may be consumed with, I will walk in peace that I might be a witness of the power of Jesus. Do you walk in peace today? Do you walk in peace amongst your brethren? Huh? I've got brethren that love to quote Hebrews to me. They love to quote Hebrews 12 and 14. And they'll say, And holiness without which... No man shall see the Lord. The only thing that aggravates that in my spirit is if you're going to quote it, quote it all. Don't try to just twist it for your advantage. Amen. Follow peace with all 
men. Not some men. Not a few men. Not just the ones you choose. But all men. And holiness. But first comes peace with all men. That's why I've got to have my feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'm not coming in here, amen, to judge, to condemn, amen, or to hurt. I come in peace. I come in peace. I want to bring the gospel. I want to help you see the truth. I'm not trying to hurt you. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I will arise and anoint my shield. That shield was made up of plied leather over wood. Amen. And it was thick leather. But it had to be anointed. If it wasn't anointed, it would dry out. Dried out leather is worthless. Believe me. I know. You ride a saddle that you haven't taken care of the leather part of the girth and you're riding along and you're feeling pretty good about yourself but you haven't taken care of your equipment because you're an ignorant teenage kid and all of a sudden that leather girth that hadn't been anointed amen has a crack in it and that crack turns into a split and the movement of the horse next thing you find yourself underneath the horse looking up thinking how in the world did I get here it was because I didn't take care of my equipment. And the shield of faith is the same way. It had to be anointed. It had to be anointed so that the leather would remain subtle. Amen. So that when the fiery darts or the arrows would come. Amen. The arrows would hit it and it would absorb those arrows into the shield. Instead of breaking and you see, if you don't anoint your shield, when the enemy fires darts at you, uh, amen, they break the shield and they penetrate until they hit you. But if you anoint your shield, how do I anoint my shield, Pastor? Prayer is that anointing oil. Oh, I come in the morning, I just lay it there, I take my faith because I'm living by faith. I just begin to anoint my shield. Lord, I'm going to go out in the world today. I'm going to hear cursing. I'm going to hear people take your name in vain. I'm going to hear all kinds of wickedness. I'm going to see things, Lord, I shouldn't see. But I want you to share the faith to protect me. Amen, Lord Jesus. I'm going to fight some spirits today. There's going to be some anger rise up against me and try to rise. But Lord, I'm needing my faith to be strong. You need to arise and anoint your shield. And take the helmet of salvation. That helmet was made to protect your mind. That, that helmet's there to protect your head from injury. That's to protect me from the gossipers. Who? The talebearers. Well, it's true. I guess I can tell it. But that, cell, that helmet of salvation helps me block out all the things that the enemy's trying to put into my spirit. And amen, the, all the things the enemy's trying to do within. And we got to be careful that we don't become pawns in the enemy's hands. It allows me to transform my mind. Be not conformed to this world, Romans 12 and 2, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When I got my helmet of salvation on. <laughs> that means I got my mind right. And then it says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word. Of God. I thank the Lord today. For my sword. Which is the word of God. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick. And powerful. 
and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's the sword. That's what we have. And when the enemy of my soul begins to attack, because I don't worry about who can take out my physical body. I worry about who can take out my soul. You, you better not worry, hey amen, about who can pull a gun on you and shoot you. You better worry about the devil that can take your soul to hell. But when the enemy attacks me, I take up my sword. I buffet him with my shield of faith. But I attack him with my sword. And I rebuke him. Not within my own power. But by the spoken word of God. Which is the greatest power and authority in the universe. You say, how do you know that, Pastor? It was the word of God that said, let there be light. And there was light. It was the spoken word of God that spoke the worlds into existence. It was the spoken word of God that made all creation, creation. So when I speak his word, it's not me speaking, but it is his word speaking through me. Even Michael the archangel in Jude the first chapter ninth verse when contending with the devil he disputed about the body of Moses does not bring against him a railing accusation. He didn't say Lucifer you're just a fallen angel. He said you're just no good Lucifer but he said the Lord rebuke thee. When I fight the devil I can't take it on my merit. I know I'm just a sinner saved by grace. He can throw every accusation at me he wants to. But I got to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Because when Jesus in Luke the fourth chapter, being full of the Spirit, was, hey man, turned back from the Jordan, was brought into the Spirit to the wilderness. And for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. And the devil would say, if, if son thou art of God, speak to these stones that it may become bread. And Jesus says, it is written. It is written. They said, I'll give you authority and the glory. You'll just bow before me. And Jesus would say, get thee behind me, Satan. It is written. It is written. He brought him to Jerusalem. Said, cast yourself down. And Jesus says, Listen, I'm going to tell you one more time. It is written in the word of God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And having ended all temptation, the devil departed from him till a convenient season. So you got to use the sword today. That's why reading the word of God is so important. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Get the word of God in you and you won't have a place for sin because Lucifer is looking for a convenient season to destroy the church and to destroy you and the fallen angels that have joined him do not want us to take their place. Hear me. They used to worship the Lord in heaven. And hallelujah, someday, by and by, the Lord tarries. Or if he comes quickly, I'm going to be able to take their place in heaven. They don't want us taking their place. They're going to do everything in their power to cause you. They're looking for that convenient season in your life when your faith is low to destroy you. They're looking for that convenient season when you're falling asleep and your spiritual aptitude is gone. Amen. To cause you to fall. They're looking for you to mess up. They don't want you to take their place in heaven. They do want you to join them in their condemnation of hell. But we know greater 
is he that's within me than he that is in the world. And when we realize the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord's, all we have to do is obey his word and trust in him. You're ready for the battle. He's equipped you for the battle. But now is not the time to quit or give up. Amen. It's not time to let fear and doubt from the enemy keep you from doing what you know to do in the Lord. Because if you get overwhelmed, remember, and I'm coming to a close. Brethren, Philippians 3.13, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I don't, I'm not looking to my past. Sometimes I may, I may share what God has brought me from, but I don't live in my past. Amen. It's all right to let somebody know Amen. As Brother Waddy said, and I've already said it this morning, it's all right to shame the devil and tell the truth. Amen. This is what I was. I'm not glorifying the devil. This is what I was. It's not what the devil is. The devil's all kinds of messed up stuff. But this is what I was. But God delivered me from that. Hallelujah. Man, Satan had me bound. I was a hostage to sin. But thank God for a prayer one mama and a daddy and, and, and sisters and brothers. And man, the Lord sent a heavenly host in. And amen, they took dominion over those spirits. And God allowed me to be delivered and set free. And he removed deception from my mind. And amen, now I'm no longer what I used to be. Yes. Believe me, if you live for God for any time at all, you're going to have some spiritual scars. Because he's going to come for you. But I'm not looking to those things that are behind me. Hey, I could sit here today and I could tell you story after story. I could just be a wambulance all day long about how bad life has been to me in some times of my life. I could cry you a river. Because life's not fair. Life hurts us all. But what am I doing today? I'm reaching forth. I'm going to her tomorrow. There's a higher calling. I got to press towards that. I'm, what are you doing, Pastor? I'm trying to get there. Yeah, there's a lot of mess in my past. There's some things that really hurt me. There's some things that destroyed me. There's some things that I'm not ashamed that I'm not that I'm ashamed of, and I really don't want to talk about. And there's some things that I wish I didn't ever go through. But you know what? I'm I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I'm forgetting those things behind me. Now, if I see a brother that's fallen, and I know he's fallen in the same thing, that I can lift down and pick him up. I've been there. I can empathize. But I'm ready for the battle. I've got some scars, I've got some wounds, but that just means I'm battle tested. That just means I've gone through the trial and I made it through. Because I'm still here. When I could be out in the world lost, but I'm here. I thought I would never preach again, but I'm here. I never thought I could be used again, but I'm here. But it was nothing I did. But the reproach that I felt in my spirit because of what I was going through. And yet, God's able to restore. God's able to get you the victory. Will you stand to, him, to your feet this morning? I just want you to know, you can do this. You are ready for the battle. You can be victorious. You can be an overcomer. You can live for God. Hello, Rapo Shatta Yarabaha.